Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Star Trek Expeditions, which is a cooperative adventure game where the crew of the Starship Enterprise basically does their best to stave off disaster running around on the planet of Nibia. Here we are folks. This is a planet that had recently been interested in joining the Federation and that's why the Enterprise had come here to conduct negotiations. But wouldn't you know, when we showed up, something seems to be amiss. Uh, suddenly the government isn't quite so hot to join the Federation after all and we're going to try to investigate and find out why. Now, we are working under some pretty tense time pressures. This here is the star date tracker, and if the little marker over there makes it all the way down to the end before we have solved the three problems of Nibia, the planet we're on, basically if we run out of time, we lose. Turns out the Klingons are here, and they've been causing all sorts of problems, and they happen to have a battle cruiser in orbit, which is going to be attacking us quite a bit. If this thing destroys, and it's a very powerful, this is much more powerful than the Enterprise itself. Now, if this thing destroys the Enterprise, we lose. On the flip side, as we scramble all over the planet and beam back and forth up and down from the Enterprise and try to solve all sorts of problems, if we can make it through three different decks, the deck having to do with the planet's pol political problems, the deck having to do with the rebels, there's a rebel um, force that's messing things up, and then there's also an energy problem. There, we have these three progress tracks, politics, rebels, and ecology. And we have to basically solve each of them by making it through a selection of some of these cards. And the better we do at it, the farther we move up on our progress tracks. Now, the game says we win if we just make it to the end of the game at all and we haven't died, you know, the, the Enterprise hasn't blown up, and we have actually solved the three problems. But there is a scoring system in place where if you score 0 to 19 points, it's considered, okay, you won, but that's it. And if you get, what is it, um, I think 20 to 29 points, yeah, then it's like, okay, well, that's actually pretty good. And then, you know, 30 to 39 points is really nice. And 40 points or more is amazing. Um, actually, although if you can make all three tracks all the way to the top, well, that's godly. And also, that's pretty much impossible to do when you're playing at the hardest difficulty level, which is what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be um, having the problems of Nibia hit us their hardest, which means we don't have very much time. So... Since there isn't much time, let's get going. Now, in this game, I am going to be playing as Captain Kirk, Jen will be uh, uh, Lieutenant Uhura, Noyota Uhura, and at the beginning of the game, we get our starting character cards, and we get two Energize cards drawn randomly. Jen got some leadership, uh, which is plus two to any role, any role at all, and she also has a crew member, this liaison officer, who is particularly good at diplomacy, but is good at, you know, really pretty much any kind of um, command challenge. She gets plus one. And Kirk over here, who is a master of diplomacy and combat, while Neota is a master of communications and stealth, Kirk has some command authority, and he can also help out repairing the Enterprise if it takes a beating, which, believe me, it will. All right, <clears throat> so uh, just because of the way I've laid it out here, no particular reason, I guess uh, Uhura is going to go first because I have her on the left. Oh, yeah, that's not true. Right, the rules actually say that Kirk is always the first player if he is around, and if it's not Kirk, then um, Spock because he's second command, and Bones. And so anyway, since Kirk is the here, he will be the first player. I'm going to go first. So, let's go. Now, there's a nice little turn summary here that everybody goes through. First thing that happens on a turn is you flip a star date card, and then you do whatever the star date card tells you, advance the time marker, starship combat might happen, any events might happen, and then once you've done dealt with the star date card, you know, the player gets to move forward and do their actions. And you can see we have a whole bunch of actions we can do. We can beam down to the planet, beam back up. We can launch a, a counterattack against the Klingons. We can go to sick bay if we're hurt. We can move around on the planet surface. We can make discoveries on the planet surface. We can use our special abilities. We can draw, we can energize to get more special cards, to get more stuff. We can transfer crew members to each other if we're in the same place. And we can attempt to complete challenges. So that's what we're going to be doing. I'm I'm the first player, so let's see what's going to happen. First of all, first star date. All right. Now, this means on this turn, I am going to get to do three actions. I've got three action points to spend. And the number on these cards is two, three, or four. Most of them are three. There's a couple of twos. There's some fours in there as well. 
So that's great. I'm going to do three things. But before we get to move forward, all of the bad stuff happens. Now, if I'm playing in easy mode, only the stuff on the blue happens. And the blue here is start it. We are clock has moved forward one step. So we're one step closer to running out of time. If you're playing on easy, that's all that would happen. If you're playing on medium, the blue would happen and the yellow would happen. And the yellow is no beaming this turn. Oh my gosh, well, that's a bit of a problem. Um, there must be some atmospheric interference that's preventing us from beaming down. That's really going to slow us down right out of the gate because we can't get onto the planet. Oh dear. And finally, uh, and so if we were playing medium, that's all that's going to happen. But we're going to play on hard. And that means um, all three of these things happen. The start date, we can't beam. And the Klingon battlecruiser is going to attack. So, whenever the Klingon battlecruiser attacks, it moves forward one space. And the closer it gets, the more danger we're in. Because while it's already much more powerful than us, at close range, it's even more deadly. So, that's going to be kind of scary. So, it moves, and now it rolls its die, and we want to roll as low as possible. Let's see a one. Can we see a one? That is so not a one. That is a four. Okay. So its default value is 4, and if we look at this little clicks dial here, let's see if I can get the camera to focus in on it. There we go. So the Klingon cruiser has 13 shields, has a default attack value of 6 for long range attacks, and 9 at short range attacks. Now, and also it has that little burst, which means it has the potential to do double damage, but only at short range attacks. So it's at long range because it's not right next to us yet. So its default is 6. Plus the 4 we rolled means it's attacking with a total of 10. Now let's check out the, inter the uh, Enterprise's shields. And unfortunately, I don't think that's going to do it. Come on. Yeah, the Enterprise default shields. You going to focus there, buddy? You going to? There we go. Is 9. So that was a 10. So the Enterprise has taken damage. That is not a good start. So, what happens? Well, this is a clicks game, which means I now have to rotate this clicks to, sh to demonstrate how the Enterprise is taking damage. And unfortunately, if you've ever played games with clicks, you know how some of the uh, clicks dials are really smooth, easy action. They, they turn really nice, and some of them are kind of stuck. Well, um, my, uh, I have kind of a gummed up Enterprise here. And so I, oh, wait, no, maybe I can. Can I slide it? Er, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Cool. So. Our shields are still at 9, but um, in fact, actually, what changed? Um, oh, I, I'm going to put the thing down so I can look to see what actually changed from the uh, top level. Oh, isn't she a beautiful ship? Okay, let's see here. At full power, the shields are 7, the long range is, or I'm sorry, the shields are 9, the long range is 7, and the short range is 8. And now that we've taken a point of damage, we're 9, 7, 7. So our short range phasers have taken a bit of a hit. So it's not too terribly bad. But now we get to fire back. Whenever there's a round of combat, the attacker fires and then the defender fires. And so let's go on ahead and now we want to roll high. Let's see some high numbers because what was the, the Klingons? Their shields are 13. Our default phasers at long range are 7. So, well, let's see if we can do it. Okay. Wow! We did it. This is a very strange die. It's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and instead of a 6, it has a 7. So that means we added 7 to our default phaser power of 7, which is 14, which is greater than the Klingon's 13. So we actually hit the Klingon's back. Hooray! Nice. And you can see this uh, Klingon dial is nice and easy and smooth. That's uh, often, usually they're like this, but sometimes you get dials that aren't quite smooth. So we've hit them. Their shields are the same, but their short range phasers have also dropped by one. Okay. Now, there's a problem. Yay! You love rolling sevens. That's great, isn't it? I mean, because you get to have the maximum potential. But you see this little negative one? Whenever you roll a seven, that means you have overexerted yourself and pushed yourself to the limit. And so, to achieve that seven, you have to take a point of damage. And in this case, the Enterprise herself has taken a second point of damage right out of the gate. And she is just not going to turn, is she? No, she's not. All right, so I'll have to put the camera down again. Hopefully, the Enterprise won't be taking too much damage during this game so that I don't have to keep putting the camera down. So we we'll rotate again. And um, so now our long range phasers are at six, which is not good. Okay. So, them. Oops, but we, ah, but we hurt ourselves in the process. There we go. So the, uh, the battle is over, and now. 
Uh, Kirk, this is all his turn, he gets to do three actions, but unfortunately he cannot beam down to the planet. And the planet is where we really need to go. We need to start coming down here and finding out what all the problems are, uncovering all these locations, collecting these um, objects like evidence of Klingon interference with local politics, or um, dilithium samples that we can use to help solve the energy crisis on the planet, or characters like an ambassador who will help us with command challenges, or rebel items which we'll need when we actually try and find the rebel hideout and stuff like that. So there's all these things we can do. And this is all set up completely randomly. All of these tokens are put out every time we play in a random location. And then there are six of these face down cards are randomly chosen from the starting deck. And then the rest of the cards are actually the locations that these special story events can happen. So we need to get down there and we need to start exploring. But this round, I cannot do it because there's no beaming. So Kirk has three actions. What can he do? Well, remember, there's a whole list of stuff he could do. <clears throat> Since I'm stuck on that, well, first of all, I think because he started out with command authority and um, repair, I think I'm going to go on ahead and use this card to repair the Enterprise. Play one on the Enterprise, repair it by one click. Although, that means I'm going to have to, let's see if I can slide it back without having to put the camera down again. Oh, come on, one-handed clicks. The reason I chose Kirk and Uhura today is because they were characters who have really nice smooth click action that I could do one-handed. I tried. Um, and the Klingon moves really quick, but uh, no, that's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. But I think I'm going to have to put the... Oh, there we go. All right, so uh, our phasers are back up to seven, thanks to that handy repair. Now, playing a card is not an action, so Kirk still has three actions he can do. So what is he going to do? Can't beam down, which is what I'd really like to do. That would be one of my actions. So I'm going to stay on the Enterprise. He's not hurt, so there's no reason to go to sick bay. Now, I could counterattack. I could have one of my actions be to fight back and try to hit the Klingon. Whenever you attack, the first thing you do is you get to move forward, um, which you can see moves you into the plus one space. The further to the right the Enterprise is at the end of the game, the more points we get towards our score. And the further to the left, the more the Enterprise retreated, the more points we lose. So I could attack. But before I do that, um, a really common thing that you'll do in this game when you know maybe you're stuck or you know you can't really do anything else is to draw more energized cards. So first thing Kirk's going to do is he's going to draw an energized card. It's a system bypass plus three to any operations challenge. Those are red challenges which we will run into down on the planet. So that's my first. I think for my second, I'll draw another one and some command authority. So now I've got two command authorities, which I can play to get three additional actions on my turn. So I could have a really busy turn. This is not a good turn to do it, though, because I'm stuck on the Enterprise because there's no beaming to the planet. Let's see. Now, I was really hoping I would have gotten drawn some cards that would um, help out because I really am inclined to um, counterattack. But here's the thing. I counterattack. I have to roll high to hit him, and then he'll get to roll again. So I don't think that makes much sense. Not until we get down to the planet and maybe find the Klingon scrambling pad, which will increase our shields, or um, the Klingon frequency pad, which will increase our, the power of our weapons. But I really want to get down and get some of these things that will pump up the Enterprise, because right now we're at a real disadvantage. That Klingon will rip us apart. So I think my whole turn was basically spent since I was stuck in orbit. I'll draw another, and I have another system bypass. Now I swear, I shuffled these up quite a bit. So anyway, so I am really ready for command challenges and and I can do a whole bunch of extra actions once I get down to the planet. So that was it. That was my turn. I, you know, we did whatever the uh, Stardate card said, and then I did my three actions. In this case, it was just draw three energy cards. And so now it's Jen's turn, or um, Ohura's turn. So first of all, there's a new event card. Um, Ohura is only going to get to do two actions this turn, and nothing happened if we were playing easy. But um, since we're playing on medium, or since we're playing on hard, the Stardate marker is going to move up three. And Jen has a choice. She must discard one crew or lose two hit points. So first of all, we lost one, two, three times. So time is ticking. Basically, if you're going to play on hard, you get to go through this um, event deck twice. There's a, just about enough of these star date um, move up things that you'll make it through twice. If you're playing on medium, you'll get through the deck about two and a half times. If you're playing on easy, you'll get through the deck three times. And believe me, this game is super easy when you play on easy. I mean, Jen and I found we really much only want to play on hard so we have a decent challenge. So anyway, so the star dates moved up. and uh, So basically, there was some kind of emergency. No out from all the damage we took, there must be um, you know some kind of feedback. You know, you know how the consoles on the Enterprise are always exploding in people's faces. So clearly that must be what happened. And either this poor um, uh, liaison officer was about to you know suffer a 
uh, you know, a heavy injury, and so Jen would have to discard this card and lose it forever. Or instead, Ohura was very brave and took two points of damage to save her. And that's what we're definitely going to do, because you, having crew cards on hand is so valuable. I think it's worth having Ohura sacrifice two hit points. One, two. See how smooth that is? rather than lose the crew card. So, we had a little bit, no doubt that happened during the barrage between the Enterprise and the Klingon cruiser. And so now, we can move on. Although, unfortunately, Ohura only gets two actions. But we want to get going as fast as possible. So her first of two actions is, she's going to beam down to the planet. And, um, and as soon as we do, we'll discover stuff. And so we have to decide, where are we going to beam down? Now, the interesting thing is, what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the location of a motorcade ambush. We're trying to find the presidential palace so we can go talk to the president. And we're trying to find the Nibian power generator. We have to find these places and then solve problems at, that lo at those locations to move our progress forward on saving the planet. And, uh, you know, the thematic reason we don't know where the palace is is because, again, there's atmospheric disturbances which have to do with all the pollution, the ecology. So, um, you, know, our, you know, and this happens all the time in Star Trek when it's convenient for the plot. So, due to atmospheric disturbances, sometimes we can't beam. And we have very limited sensor sweeps of the planet. So, all we know is the location of all these little tiles, but we don't know what's actually waiting for us at all locations because we could not do full and proper scans. That would be the storyline reason for the gameplay mechanisms. So, anyway. Now, dilithium samples are good to pick up because um, if we have, the more dilithium samples we have, the better we will do at solving this Nibian power generator. The crystalline element which regulates energy production is rapidly degrading, leading to a planet-wide energy shortage. Analyze the crystalline elements. Um, and so we have to have a score of 19 when we roll the dice. But if we have some dilithium samples, that makes it easier because for every dilithium sample we have when we try this, we get plus two. So we could go beam down to get some dilithium samples. Um, now we have another use. We can use these dilithium samples for the problem. And also, we can, if we have them in our inventory, we can discard them to add plus one to the Enterprise weapon. So they have two uses. But if we discard them, they're gone forever, and then we can't use them for this. Now we could also instead beam down, let's say, over here to the Klingon scrambling pad to increase our shields. Because those Klingons are just going to be merciless. They are going to beat us to a pulp. So the more of these, if we want to beam down and get one of these uh, upgrades, the, you know, either the, uh, the Klingon frequency pad or the scrambling pad, that could help protect the Enterprise if we beam back up and install them on the Enterprise to up our shields and our, our um, right, our, let's see. Now also, we, let's see, what else do we need? If we find evidence of Klingon tampering in local politics, we will have, a much e we'll have a much easier time getting the good ending. Because every one of these things, when we eventually find the presidential palace, where the Nibian government is suddenly reluctant to join the Federation, despite uh, technological and trade assistance um, that we're offering, discover why Nibia has changed its stance. Which means we have to deploy 20 diplomacy. If we hit that 20 and we bring two Klingon evidence, we will get the good ending. And our politics score will go up by three. We'll start screaming up the success track. If we get the 20 but we don't have the two Klingon evidence, well, then we, um, we get the poor ending, which means we only get one on the progress track. And remember, we're trying to score as many points as possible. So it's worthwhile going out and finding the evidence first, which is over here and over here, and then coming back over here. And um, the motorcade ambush, if we don't need to find anything. The main thing about this is, if we can score the 21 medical, because people have been, you know, the rebels have attacked, a motorcade ambush, there are people who are wounded, 21 medical we need to be able to defeat this. If we do it by day 7, we'll get the good ending, because not many people died. But if we take too long, then we'll get the bad ending, and so we'll only get plus 1 instead of plus 3. So this game is a race against time, trying to find stuff, trying to find the locations of these things, and then stepping in, rolling some dice, and um, using the cards we've got to see if we succeed. So, and all of that is important because it helps us determine where should Uhura beam down. Um, let's see, well since the, the Enterprise has already taken two points of damage, I think it might be worthwhile to come down over here so we can get the scrambling pad and install it to shield. So, I think she'll beam down. This is, remember, she has two actions, so she's going to beam down here. Now, whenever you enter a space, you find out what's there. And here we have Captain's Log, Energy. That means we have discovered the Nibian power generator. We have found the source. And so we now have an action we can do here. If we bring dilithium, if we can roll a 19 
um, and analyze the crystalline element successfully, we will succeed. And for every dilithium sample we have when we try this, we get plus two. So if we have both dilithium samples, I think there's two of them on the board, we would only have to be hitting a, um, a 15, which would be a lot easier to hit. So anyway, this is our goal here. So that was uh, Hura's first thing, she beamed. Now her second thing is, I think she is going to pick up the uh, Klingon scrambling pad so she can beam back up, install it onto the Enterprise. Now she could instead, she could attempt to solve this problem right now, but a 19 is going to be pretty tough. If, um, because, so this is a blue uh, challenge, which means it's a science challenge. If we look at Ohura, her base stat for science is, are you going to focus there buddy? Do you just hate me now? Is an 8. So, Ohura has 8 by default. If she rolled two fives, she'd get an 18. She wouldn't do it. She'd have to be able to get to roll double seven. So it's almost impossible for her to do this by herself. She Now, she does have leadership, which means she can add, whenever she wants, plus two to any roll she makes. But I think it's going to be better off if we go and collect this dilithium, somebody collects it, brings it over here, and then we'll have a much better chance. Now, also, if, we, if anybody had the power, the special trait of analysis, that would also give us plus two to our role. Now, Mr. Spock, he is a natural-born analyzer, so he would be very well suited to this, as you might imagine, but unfortunately, he's not in the game. And neither Kirk nor Uhura are particularly good at analysis, so we really need to get those dilithium systems crystals and get them over there to have the best chance of succeeding. Because all we have to do is do a 19, but that's the poor ending. If we can get a 24 plus, we can get the good version, which puts us on the success track instead of the failure track. Right. Okay. So that was Ahura's whole turn. She beamed down and she picked these up. All right. Now it's Kirk's turn again. Next star date. Ooh, Kirk gets four actions. Um, the star date uh, counter moves forward twice and the Klingons are going to attack. So we're one, two. And the Klingons attack. Come on, let's get a low number. Let's see a one. Everybody, visualize a one. Everybody, you were not visualizing the one. You were, oh, wow, a six. I think that's, uh, there's no hitting around it. Six plus six is 12. I know our shields are nowhere near. Yeah, our shields are at nine. Uh, now, yeah. So that's it. We just take another point. Oh, and the Klingons moved forward again. And they're getting closer and closer to be within close range, which is when they can start doing double damage. And hey, at least the... All right, so we slid down a little bit. And so once again, all right. So that's not good. And our time has moved up. And so now Kirk can move. He gets to do four actions this turn. Although if he wanted, he could do seven um, or even 10 actions if he gives up his command authority. All right. So what are we going to do, Kirk? You could fire back, but I don't think so. I think it's time to beam down. So we're going to go pick up these dilithium samples so we can get them over here to the power generator. So first action, beaming down. And what do we discover at this location? Oh, our politics. Okay, so we've just found the presidential palace. Okay. Now, oh, this is actually nice. To um, succeed at the presidential palace, discover why Nibia has changed its stance. Um, we have to get a 20. Um, and that, and for, air, for if we have diplomacy, we get plus two to our role. It just so happens Kirk is a master of cowboy diplomacy. All right, so Kirk really only has to get an 18 to succeed at this. And he starts at a 10 um, right now because he's at full health. So he gets to roll two dice. He could take a shot, a shot at this. But if we want to get the good ending, we need to do this with two Klingon evidence. So do we go for the bad ending right now because we can't possibly get the good ending? Let's see, the Klingon, which means we have to spend time picking it up. I do think we should spend time picking it up. So, um, so anyway, so Kirk beamed down. That was his first thing. Second thing, he's going to pick up dilithium. Third thing, he's going to move over here, um, which means he's discovered another location. And, oh no, Kirk has been captured by rebels. You're captured by the rebels. All right, this is a problem. You may not leave this location before completing um, this challenge. At the end of each of your turns, advance the time tracker one space. Oh, wow. That is very bad. Now, to defeat this, we need to roll a 20. If we had any rebel items, that would help, but we haven't picked those up. And if we had stealth, and Kirk is no good at stealth. He's not the Mr. Stealth. So that's bad news. Wow. Okay. So anyway, so now, so he's stuck here. He cannot escape. He can't leave, but he can still do stuff. So we've beamed down. We picked up a thing. We've moved here. We'll pick up the other thing. So now we have all the dilithium we need to do really well at the power generator. But we have a problem because at the end of the turn, advance the time tracker. That's going to kill us very fast. Um, alrighty. So 
it is now Ohura's turn. Although, now Kirk can do some more stuff. He could give these up and do some more actions. Like, um, let's see, so hold on a second. Let's say, it's not, let's say he's going to give up a command authority. That's going to give him three more actions now. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, so we discard that. So we've got three more actions. First of all, we're going to energize to see if we can draw another card that will help out. All right, a transport officer. Now, like I said, we have to get a 20, and it's a red. Now, Kirk's default value in red is 8. So that means we really have to get a 12, because we already have 8, so we need to get 12 more. Kirk's got these system bypasses that add 3 to any operations challenge. So we can use system bypasses to get past this. And we just got the transport, which gives a permanent plus 1. So that means Kirk really has 9, which means he has to get 11. And we could add these if we need to. Let's see. So I think Kirk is actually going to try to deal with these rebels without worrying about the stealth items, without worrying about Ohura coming over to help him, because she could use her stealth to help him out. So Kirk, he uses command authority. He's got two more actions. I'm going to draw one more. My second action, I'm going to draw one more card. And let's see, it's a Helm Officer who helps in combat. But we don't need combat in this case. We need stealth. That's too bad. Although, um, Kirk is really set for any combat challenges. And believe me, there'll be plenty of combat challenges too. So Kirk has one more action now. See, and so he's got these two crew. He's got these other cards. He could use a Command Authority and get three more actions if you want, but we should really save those. Kirk is going to use his last action before the timer moves up to try to um, be stealthy and sneak and escape. From the, now, here's the problem. If we get the 20, okay, well, we got to escape. If we get 25, not only do we escape, we receive the Ancient Artifact, which is a very, very cool thing that we can discard to get four additional actions anytime we want. So we really want to get a 25. Now, that's a bit of a stretch, but you know what? Time is running out, and so I don't think we're going to mess around. Kirk's last action, he's going to go for it. And he's going to roll high, high, high. He's going to roll like a Klingon here. Are you ready, folks? Let's see some big numbers. Those are not big numbers. <laughs> that is a five total. Five plus his eight is uh, 13, plus the, tra the uh, transport officer is, is 14. So we didn't even get to the 20. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So if we give up both these system bypasses, we can do it. We can um, beat that. But we'll, And now once we're out of energized cards, that's it. They're gone for good. We don't get to reshuffle them back into the deck. We have a finite number of those. But if Kirk fails at this attempt, he will immediately take one point of damage, which is not good. Now, one thing Kirk can do is, he could voluntarily take damage. He can take, for every two points of damage he voluntarily takes, that adds plus one to his attempt. But, oh, shoot, what a terrible roll. Five, six, um... Now, he could just choose to fail, give command authority, and try some more. And really, this game is all about proper use of the cards, um, how to use them as best possible. I think we're just going to use up both system bypasses. So that was six, seven, um, plus his, you know, his eight and his five is the total of 20. So Kirk did it. He defeated the rebels, but unfortunately, he didn't do it with panache. Um, no doubt because of the system bypasses, so we didn't do the 25, so we did not receive the alien artifact. But this card is removed from the game. And so that means we, our, time, our clock won't move down. I think it was worth giving up those two cards to prevent losing time. And so now, and Kirk is free to move around again. And we've cleared this area out. And he's got the Dilithium. If he can get them up to Uhura, well, then you know, we're, we're well on our way. So that was Kirk's turn. Now it's Uhura's turn again. Let's draw, and let's see what's happening. All right, Kohura gets four, and the Klingons are going to attack again. I swear, sometimes they don't attack, um, but they're going to attack now. So, okay, folks, once again, let's see here for a, let's shoot for a low number. None of those sixes. The Klingons are going to start whiffing and swing better again with a four. This is ridiculous. All right. Four plus six is ten. Our shields are down to a paltry eight. So once again, we take a beating. Oh, the poor Enterprise. All right, our shields are still at eight. Shields holding, Captain, but um, yeah, it's not good. So now we get to fire back, and this time we're going to roll. Uh, well, actually, I don't. Gosh, I mean, what's our what's our? We're down now to a six. A six plus a seven is a thirteen, and their shields are thirteen. So we can't possibly get them because we have to beat their shields. And so we. All right, so we didn't hit back. And um, let's see. Did I did I move them forward? How many times have we been attacked now? One, two, three. 
So yeah, they have moved forward again and they're getting closer. And when they get into close range, then we're really in trouble. Now, the interesting thing is every time they move forward, we have the option of moving back to keep them away because at close range, they can do double damage. Um, but we're not going to start doing that because if we fall back, we're going to lose points at the end of the game. All right. So anyway, so that was bad, but now Uhura is going to turn it all around. Uh, she is going to uh, kick some butt and take some names. Now, we need to get this dilithium over to the power generator so we can hopefully have a really good success here. Um, let's see. Now, actually, probably what makes the most sense is on Kirk's turn, he could step here, step here, and then go for it. And the nice thing is, if you have a teammate on the area, uh, same area as you whenever you try to do something, their presence automatically adds plus two. So if Kirk is trying to do it with Uhura here, it's already a 17 instead of a 19 we have to do. Although, remember, we really want to hit that 24 so we get the best ending, which is why we have these dilithium samples. When we get these here, th this is two, this is two. Having a teammate here is two. So that's six total. Now, really, ideally, we'd want Spock doing this. Hmm. All righty. But let's see. So what are we going to do? I think we are going to have... Now, Uhura could beam back up to um, the Enterprise, but the, the, one of the only restrictions about all the actions we get to do is if you beam up, you can't beam back down on the same turn. So um, there's no reason to beam back up unless we want, need to go to sick bay um, or we want to initiate an attack from the Enterprise or we want to go up to install these scrambling pads. Um, but here's the thing, if, if Uhura comes up here to install the pad, so our shields are increased, so we have a better chance of not getting eaten alive, then um, that means on Kirk's turn he'll come over here and it'll be too late for Uhura to come down. Although Kirk could move over here, and then on the following turn Uhura could beam back down and use the dilithium that Kirk carried over. So that's a possible way to go. And you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because I'm going to have to decide what we're going to do as we continue um, with this exploration. But we need to start planning a little bit better. I mean, it's, it's good we've cleared this out, but time is running out. The Enterprise is taking a beating. We haven't even started working on any of our three plots that we have to solve. And, um, right. So, if you would like to watch a little bit more, you can basically hit the I that's up in the top right corner, and that'll bring up the side window, and you can go to extended playthrough. Or alternatively, you can go straight to final thoughts. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.